on Kobe Bryant just over an hour ago on Instagram. I'm not ready, but here I go. Man, I'm sitting here trying to write something for this post, but every time I try to begin crying again just thinking about you, niece Gigi, and the friendship, bond, brotherhood we had. I'd literally just heard your voice Sunday morning before I left Philly to head back to L.A. Didn't think for one bit in a million years that would be the last conversation we'd have. I'm heartbroken and devastated, my brother. Man, I love you, big bro. My heart goes to Vanessa and the kids. I promise you I'll continue your legacy. You mean so much to us here, especially Laker Nation, and it's my responsibility to put this on my back and keep it going. Please give me the strength from the heavens above and watch over me. I got us here. There's so much more I want to say, but just can't right now because I can't get through it. Until we meet again, my brother. The final image he posted was Kobe's tweet to LeBron on Saturday. Welcome to the latest Sports Center, John Butchergrass mm -hmm. and John Anderson. The sudden and tragic death of 41 year old Kobe Bryant and his 13 year old daughter, Gianna Bryant, was still in the heavy hearts and confused minds of many today. The father and daughter, forever young and forever linked with the heartbreaking query of what could have been. For many, it is all still too much. Just getting through the day, that's the struggle. The idea of basketball isn't possible, which is why the Lakers won't play tomorrow night at home against the Clippers. Certainly activity at Staples Center. As you take a live look there right now, see people. You look, there's giant boards there hidden just behind that, that banner where people are signing and leaving their thoughts. The NBA postponing the game between L.A.'s teams at the Lakers' request. There is grief to deal with, mourning to be done, profoundly sad arrangements to be made, Practice canceled today, as you might expect. Rescheduling Tuesday's game, that's also for another day. Father and daughter courtside in Brooklyn, talking ball, smiling, edging close. That's an image for the ages, too, now. The last line of Adrian Wojnarowski's ESPN.com piece on Kobe. Woj, not only the best newsbreaker, but also the best basketball writer. Extraordinary piece. Thank Please you. go read it. Kobe, uh, why did the NBA... Uh, Adrian, why did the uh, NBA postpone tomorrow's uh, Laker Clipper game at the Staples Center? The Lakers asked them to and told them that as an organization, they needed more time before they could put on a game, host uh, a game of that emotional magnitude at Staples. The Clippers acquiesced. They went along with it. And so Friday night on ESPN, Blazers, Lakers, that's when they'll make their return to the court. Uh, in the aftermath of Kobe's passing. Okay. Adrian Wojnarowski on the very latest, as again, the Clippers and Lakers postpone tomorrow's game, their first game after the tragic death Friday on ESPN. Lakers organization finally putting to words all that has been trying to comprehend and process and deal with through the last 48 hours. I'm celebrating LeBron James passing Kobe on the NBA's all-time scoring list Saturday night to Bryant's death Sunday morning. They write, the Los Angeles Lakers would like to thank all of you for the tremendous outpouring of support and condolences. This is a very difficult time for all of us. We continue to support the Bryant family and we'll share more information as it is available. Dave McMedman has logged many miles, many games with the Lakers. He is at the Staples Center, the LA Live Complex. You saw that where the fans have gathered over the last day in something of a Kobe Fellowship Collective. And Dave, we finally get a small glimpse from the Lakers about what's going on, very minimal information. Uh, what, what do you have that the franchise is doing behind the scenes? Well, John, first of all, they're being very sensitive and cognitive uh, of the Vanessa Bryant and the rest of the Bryant family, working in conjunction with her for any plans they would make and also working in conjunction with the league office. Now, today, Kobe Bryant just wasn't a Lakers player. He was a Lakers employee for 20 years, and it's a family-run business, and there's many... Lakers employees that worked alongside him for years and so the team brought in grief counselors for uh, employees to be able to meet with in both group and one-on-one -on -one sessions and they canceled practice as a team. Tomorrow the players will come in. They're going to have a light workout I'm told and have some sort of team luncheon where they can all reflect and be together uh, and to figure out how they want to move forward as a group. Uh, because they're going to get back into the grind of the regular season with a game Friday at Staples Center against the Portland Trailblazers. So the franchise, the organization closing ranks, understandably. Um, 
You haven't been able to talk to anybody currently on the roster, but former Lakers, obviously, you know, we hear the Laker for life thing. Uh, what are you hearing from those fellows that you've talked to? Yeah, John, I, I spoke to Jordan Farmar today, and he told me that I've barely been able to go an hour without breaking down crying since I heard the news yesterday. Um, similar sentiments coming from Luke Walton and Brian Shaw, who was with a player and a coach with Kobe Bryant. Um, Josh Powell, who was a, a bench player on those Pal Gasol Kobe championship teams and really developed a bond there. And then Gilbert Arenas, a, a former opponent, of Kobe's who has young children in the Southern California area and got to know Kobe in his post-playing career. He told me that Kobe told him this summer, you have so much knowledge to give to the game. You should really think about um, finding an outlet for that. And uh, Gilbert told me, um, I, I got to do it. I got to listen to what Kobe told me. The days of wild Gilbert are over. Um, you know, if that's the type of uh, impact that Kobe can have posthumously, that's saying a lot. Dave McMenamin in Los Angeles, where he still will have a story to cover tomorrow. It just will not be the Lakers-Clippers game. Thank you, Dave. Current Laker Anthony Davis posted this photo with Kobe from the 2012 Olympics when Team USA won a gold medal. Man, this is a tough one for me. You were the first guy to put me under your wing and show me the ins and outs of the league. Had so many great convos about so many things, and I will cherish those moments forever. Love you forever, Bean. Kobe and Shaq were a championship duo in L.A., multiple championships before they both became too big and too headstrong and couldn't be on the same roster. But the Alpha Males eventually worked things out, as they do. In the wake of yesterday, I guess it would all seem sort of petty right now, Shaq tonight finally able to speak on Kobe's death. I'm working out with Shakira. I didn't want to believe it. And then everybody's calling me. Is that true? Is it true? So I'm like, it must not be a hoax because now the whole world knows this information. So now I'm saying, please don't be true. Please don't be true. Please don't be true. And I'm watching. And then you get the confirmation. And sad enough, and when you hear his daughter is with him. I didn't do anything. I haven't eaten. I haven't slept. I'm looking at all the tapes. The only thing that's sad to me is I'm not going to be there. He's not going to be here when he walks into the Hall of Fame. I was just thinking about who's he going to call up to bring him in? Who's going to give a speech? Is he going to call me? Is he going to call Mike? Who? who? Now, that's not going to happen. Kobe and Shaq certainly had quite the run together. Made the NBA Finals in four of their eight seasons together in L.A., three championships. Helped usher in a new era of NBA basketball after Michael Jordan's retirement. Do also help lead the Lakers to the best winning percentage in the eight seasons that they played together. Part of Kobe's unique NBA stardom was the international flair and flavor he brought to the NBA as a bilinguist, a childhood resident of Italy from age 6 to 13. His dad played pro ball there, Joe. An NBA hero to teenagers like Luka Doncic. Just 29 days ago, Mavericks visiting L.A., Kobe is with daughter Gigi right there, courtside. And check this out. Third quarter, Don Teach turns around. He hears someone <laughs> say something. And, oh, it's Kobe. And he turns around and look at the look on his daughter's face. Such a beautiful moment. Here's Luca on the moment and what Kobe said. She was talking, so I was like, I was talking my language. And I saw Kobe, and I was, like, really surprised. What did he say? Ah, uh, I can't say that. <laughs> I can say that. Too many curse words or what? I don't know. It was like some, somebody was talking to me and I turned around and I was like, I saw Kobe. I was like, what is going on? I was surprised. I was shocked. How's his accent? Huh? Great. Such a cool moment. Then after the game, listen in as Kobe introduces Luca to his daughter, Gigi. Beautiful manners from his daughter there. After the introduction, Kobe made sure to capture a picture. And you see all the other cameras coming out as well. This is a, a Getty image here of Kobe taking the picture. What a beautiful shot. Gigi and Luca posing together again less than a month ago. They 
relentless approach to a game he dearly loved. Mavericks and Thunder tonight trying to concentrate on the basketball work at hand. That's difficult for sure. Luca, emotional before tip, wearing Kobe sneakers with all the victims' names written on them, eight and all. Mark Cuban says no Maverick now will ever wear 24 again and has become commonplace across the NBA. It will take an eight-second violation. They're still mm. causing turnovers. Mm. Third quarter, Mavs are up 13. Doncic. That's a lot, man. You know, uh, him and LeBron, you know, for me, were uh, the guys that I played basketball. You know, I was look up to them, and that's why I got motivated by uh, for playing basketball. You know, it's just, just really hard. Luca, what will you remember most about him? What will you miss most about Kobe? Everything. Uh, obviously. The one time uh, about a month ago uh, in Staples, you know, when he he talked to me, uh, you know, it was just something special. Uh, I was just looking forward to uh, more of those moments. You know, I was really excited uh, after the game. I said, you know, it was something special. You know, Kobe, Kobe knows your name. You know, he's around. Just something amazing. And I was looking forward to more more moments like that with him. It was very emotional. I broke down after the first quarter. Uh, that's when, when it really, really hit me. You know, it just snap was moment. Uh, it, was, it was really hard to play today. For me. Just small touching moments of that charisma and yet the impactful and lasting. As it was yesterday, and was tonight, and will be in the coming days. Brian honored, remembered in gyms around the NBA. Coach Spolster there in Miami. Blake Griffin there in the Pistons game in Chicago. Zach Levine, the Bulls, took a moment, silence before the game. Minnesota, Kings on the road, somber across the league as they continued to try to do their jobs. Luke Walton on the death of Bryant. The basketball world, we lost. We lost one of our greats. And I don't just mean that by what he did on the court, uh, but just the way he lived his life. Every day, he got the most out of it. Uh, whether he was attacking treatments or attacking skill sets, uh, he just, he lived his life to the fullest every single day. And he's an absolute um, inspiration. And I'm, I'm honored to be able to call myself his friend and his teammate and his brother and all those things that came with uh, the years we spent together. He inspired a whole generation of kids pretty much just, you know, they wanted to be like him. It's, you know, like kids in the in the 80s and 90s wanted to be like Mike, you know, we wanted to be like Kobe. And, um, you know, growing up and, and seeing the different highlights, his hard work, I feel like that was one of the biggest things that he instilled in me was his hard work. And I try to bring that to my game. and his passion for the game, how, how ruthless he was and uh, as a competitor, but it was more than that, you know, as a basketball player, but, you know, he was a father, you know, there was more families on there, and it, it's just it's just terrible what happened, man, and, you know, it's just it's just such a loss in so many different ways. I'm absolutely devastated, uh, but my heart 